guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about the basics of Docker and Docker Compose to run your applications inside of containers. So what is a container? Well, a container is kind of its own little operating system image that has Linux and whatever dependencies you need installed on top of that and your application code. So this can be contained in a single file which you can then give to someone else. They can run your code with all the dependencies and they don't have to do anything other than install and run your Docker image and that's it. So this is really useful in development so you can run the same code on any operating system no matter what tools are installed and this same thing goes for production. So in production, you're going to want to maybe add 10 servers. Well, you can just download the Docker image and run 10 copies of that and you have 10 instances of that and there's nothing fancy that you need to set up. So that's really, really handy, but it does push a lot of the DevOps work onto you as the developer who has to maintain the Docker file and any other configuration stuff. So let's dive into building our first Docker file. We are going to go to an application we've worked on before, the device hotwired example, and we're gonna add a Docker file to the root of that directory. So this Docker file is where we define all of the things we need to do inside of the Docker image to set it up and run our code. So let's dive into this. First things first, you're going to generally have a from line, which is going to say, hey, grab another Docker image as the foundation that we're gonna build on top of. So we're gonna use Ruby as the uh, Docker image and we're gonna use 3.0 Alpine to do that. So this is gonna give us a base Alpine Linux image, which is a lightweight distribution that you can have and it's gonna have Ruby 3.0 pre-installed for us. Now we need to then run a command to install some dependencies. Now I'm gonna paste this in and we're gonna install the Postgres client and Yarn and Node.js and a few other things like image magic and Git so that we have all of those dependencies um, that we need. Now this is something that you will definitely want to tweak. You may not need all of these things. You also might need some additional things. And so you're gonna have to go and modify the dependencies there. This last line is gonna say, hey, once you've installed all those, go delete those packages that we just downloaded, like the zip files of those basically. We don't need those install files because in our image, we're gonna have all the uh, stuff installed. So those packages we can get rid of and save up some space in our image. So once we've installed all of our dependencies, you can run any other configuration things you might need to do in there, but we then need to tell Docker that we want to work inside of slash app or some folder inside of that image. So the, think of this as an operating system. We're gonna create a directory called slash app in the root and put all of our code in there. And to do that, we're gonna use Workdir to uh, create the slash app. And then we're gonna copy our current directory on our machine, so on my Mac OS install. We're gonna take the current directory and then put all of that inside of the image in slash app. Then we can do a few other things. We're gonna use bundle path and override that so that we install our gems to the slash gems folder. And then we're going to run yarn install and run bundle install. So those will install all of the yarn dependencies and bundle as well. And then we can define our entry point. And this is going to define what command is run when our Docker image is started. So we'll say bin rails. And then we can add any options we want in there. So we will say the server dash B to bind to zero, zero, zero. And then the last thing we need to do is expose port 3000. So Rails normally runs on port 3000. We're leaving that as the defaults and we're gonna have our Docker image say, hey, you can access port 3000 and access this app on there. So that's all we really need to do to set up our Docker file and now we need to go build it. So in our terminal, we can run docker build dash dash tag my app or whatever your app name is. And then you can give it the period, which will say, look for the docker file in this folder. So if we run that, it's going to download the Ruby 3.0 Alpine image. It's then going to run our dependency uh, command here to install all of those. Then set up our working directory, copy our code over, and then run our yarn install and our bundle install. 
in order to get all those dependencies ready to go. And it will create this image at the end that we can just run and we will never have to replace these steps unless we need to build a new copy of our image. So we can run this over and over again um, and we won't have to go through any of those steps. So we'll give it some time to finish creating our image. So now that our image is built correctly, we can go and run docker run my app, which is what we named our tag for our image. And this is gonna start up our Docker image and start our Rails server, which we set as the entry point in that Docker file. And here you can see it booted up Puma. We can try opening up localhost 3000 in our browser, but it's not gonna work. And that's because we need to tell Docker to actually take port 3000 from the image and actually expose it on our um, machine as port 3000 as well. So we can shut this down with control C and we'll add dash P 3000 colon 3000, which is basically saying take Docker's port 3000 and map it to your operating system's port 3000. And now if we do this, we'll be able to access our Rails app. Now it's not able to see our Postgres server inside of Mac OS X because this is the image and it has its own separate networking going on that it cannot access our Postgres server. So what do we do? Well, we can use Docker Compose to actually spin up our Postgres server, our Redis server, and our application image all at once. So let's go and define a docker compose.yaml file. So we'll say docker compose.yaml and inside of here we're going to say version and we can use the latest version or whatever version uh, you want as long as it's 3.x that is the latest. Um, then you can define your services that you want to run. So this can be things like your Rails app, your Postgres server, and your Redis server. So we'll do one for our database. We are going to have the image which will be the Postgres latest image. We are going to have an environment variable. Here, we are going to define Postgres password equals password. That's a required environment variable for the Postgres image. And then we're gonna set up the port so that 5432 is mapped to 5432 on our operating system. And our volumes here, so we can persist the data, we're gonna have DB data, slash var, slash lib, slash postgresql, slash data, which is where the Postgres data lives. Then we're gonna have a Redis image, which will come from the Redis latest image, and ports 6379, 6379, which is the default. And you could also add a, a volume for this if you wanted to persist that, but it's Redis data, and we're not really using it for anything but um, you know, caching and action cable stuff, so we don't need to store that data anywhere. So then we can have our web, um, our Rails app, and this one is going to be, instead of an image, we're gonna build the current directory, which is our Docker file, and that will run the same Docker build command for us automatically. And then we can set our po ports to 3000, 3000. So basically is adding that option for command line stuff that we don't have to specify every time. And then we can say this depends on our DB and our Redis servers. And then for this one, we're gonna have a couple environment variables and this will be a database URL equal to Postgres. Postgres user is the default. We define the password up here on line six. So we'll have password and our host is going to be DB. So when we define the name here for the image, the networking inside of Docker is going to be able to know, hey, we wanna to talk to that image, so we can just specify that by name, and our port, and then we can have the Postgres database name. And I just wanna point out here that this is all the defaults from the Postgres Docker image, and you can take a look at their readme, um, but basically they have the Postgres password which is a required environment variable. The rest are optional. So we're just using the default database name, default username, and so on. Um, and that's how we got to our URL here. Now I'm gonna fix a quick typo up here. Environment should be spelled right. And then we can add our Redis URL to point to our Redis image. 
the Redis protocol. So we'll say Redis 6379, which is the default port. And if you wanted to use like port 5000, you can add that here and that would set up your port, but we're gonna use the default for Rails. And then last but not least, we want volumes, where the current directory will be copied to slash app. And then we can add volumes db data, which we specified here in our volumes for um, Postgres. So basically this file is very similar to what you would write if you're building GitHub Actions or CircleCI or Travis CI images. So you have your Rails app image, you have your databases, and all of those can talk to each other and get spun up and tear, torn down um, without a problem. So that can run it for your CI, delete it and move on. Um, but this is kind of the same thing, but you can use it for development or deploying to production. So once this is all done, Docker Compose has a very simple command docker compose up and it's going to go download all of your images make sure they're all running because we have the depends on it's going to make sure db and redis are running before it starts the web one and that is about it so it is going to take care of everything for us and once that's running we'll have an entire environment with our rails app and our databases that we can use in development so we'll let this run and then we'll be able to open up localhost and try it out. So now that our Docker Compose is all up and running, we can refresh our page for our Rails app and we're gonna see that it wants us to run our migrations, which we can do, and that's going to update everything in the database. And once that is done, we'll be able to use our Rails application and that will be perfect. So what's cool about this is that we can also go and shut down everything. Because we have the volume set up, we can restart Docker Compose. It's gonna restart all of our images, run them, and it's going to persist that database data. So next time we refresh, after restarting everything, we don't have a blank database. We've actually persisted all of that. So all of our data is still there and it has not disappeared. And that's because we are editing files in a image that's running in memory. So if we shut it down and restart it, it's gonna use the image that we built previously and that's not gonna have any of those files that we might have uploaded or added to our image. That's the reason why Heroku doesn't allow you to upload images to the containers um, in your application's file system because they're gonna get blown away whenever your app restarts. So you need some external persistent storage like Amazon S3. So that is the basics of Docker. You just define all of these commands to configure your Linux image with all your dependencies, and then you build the image and you can run it along with other images using Docker Compose. So if you've ever set up CI, this is going to be very, very similar um, or familiar to you. And that is the basics of running Docker and Docker Compose.